All right, it's 6.03, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Let's see here. Okay, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat if you guys have any questions, but if you do have microphones, feel free to speak up between slides if you do have questions as well. Uh, this is the class of uh, Library Basics, or how to find that article you're looking for. And first, a little bit about me so you know who you're listening to. Uh, my name is Kendra Harrell, and I'm a librarian here at Texas A&M University. Um, let's see. My contact info and office hours are on the screen there. Um, I've got four dogs, a husband that like to crochet, and my hair is currently purple and a little bit longer than that picture. So I'm pretty easy to spot if you need help. Some other helpful folks around the library. Um, Terry Stover is the library director. Nisha Federick is our reference librarian, and Olivia Garcia is our electronic and digital, digital services librarian. Um, and there's lots of other helpful people that work in the library as well that aren't on this slide, but these are some of our full-time librarians that are here to help you out with projects. So your university library is the John F. Moss Library, and it's in the University Center building of the campus in Texarkana here. Um, the service desk is on the third floor, just inside the library entrance, and most of the books are actually on the fourth floor. The library has a lot of books, um, but this presentation is mostly about our electronic resources. So this course is meant to be a practical guide to finding what you need on the library's website. The goals are to learn how to access library resources through the web, learn how to build a functional search, learn how to narrow down your search results, learn how to tell if an article is peer reviewed or not, learn how to find libguides, the Ask Us chat, and other help features. And some of the questions I'm gonna answer in this training are what is a database? What is a journal? What is peer review and why does it matter? What is special about library databases? How do you search library databases? How do you narrow down a search, save an article, choose a database to search at all, and how to get help? So first, in order to find a resource, it's kind of important to know what you're looking at. So when I talk about library databases, what am I actually talking about? Well, a database is essentially a collection of information that's stored in electronic format. Sometimes a database can be general, like Wikipedia, which is an online crowdsourced encyclopedia, but sometimes it can be a themed database, like Wikipedia, the online Star Wars encyclopedia. So like both of those, a lot of databases are free to use online, and also like those, uh, many databases are not necessarily academic databases. So the information that's stored in databases comes in many different types. Journal articles are one of the big ones, and that's what we're going to be focusing on in this class. Other categories that you might see are newspaper, magazine articles, books, ebooks, videos, and images. Some of our databases focus only on one type of information, like just journal articles, but some have a mix of different types, maybe videos, images, and articles. So when I say journal, what does that mean exactly? Well, you can think of a journal as a collection of articles, just like a magazine, but it's usually with a lot fewer advertisements. Um, peer reviewed journals are used by academics of all professions to update each other about their work, inform the world about new discoveries or changes in research and to contribute to their field in kind of a formal way. Journals are published on a quicker timetable than books, um, so because of that, they tend to be more current. Um, they're often more relevant to trending topics in a field of study. And because articles are relatively short, they can be very targeted about specific information or a single topic. So a vast majority of the library's journal articles are available through electronic databases, but there are still some that are in print only that are in the library. So these journals can't be checked out, but they're available for use in the library. Um, if you're a distant student and you need to access a print journal article, or if you um, want to just come in and scan uh, one article from a journal real quick, we can help you with that. That's not a problem. Um, we can even, if you're a distant student, scan it and email it to you. <clears throat> so, how are library databases different from Wikipedia? Well, there's actually a lot of ways, but we're going to talk about three main ones. One important distinction is that they're often not free, which means your tuition and government funding enables the library to purchase subscriptions for them that you're able to then use. So that's why it's 
that's why it's important to use the library's website as kind of a portal to access those resources. Because if you try to access them just through Google, you'll be directed to pay for the content and you really don't need to be doing that. Um, another important difference is that library databases are aimed at academic content. So if you're searching for sharks, you're not just going to find like a video for baby shark, but you're going to find journal articles about shark behavior or biology. Another one of the reasons that the information in library databases is different from Wikipedia is that a lot of it is peer reviewed. <laughs> so this means that when a journal publishes an article, they have other professionals in that field review the content of that work first to make sure that it lives up to the standards of that field. So, for example, if a scientist submitted an article on shark bites to be published by the American Journal of Forensic Medicine and Pathology, and it has references to the different size bites of baby shark versus mommy shark, citing the baby shark video on YouTube, the other scientists in charge of reviewing those submissions are going to flag that so it does not get published. So this process is meant to control the quality of an academic journal and maintain high standards for published articles. And Wikipedia articles and a lot of other database articles like that are not necessarily subject to that kind of filtering. <coughs> Excuse me. So next we're going to look at uh, different types of databases that the library has. Some of our databases have the full text of journal articles, but some only contain partial text, like an abstract or a summary or an index of the articles. And I'll show you how to kind of filter those out from your search so that you're only looking at articles that we have the complete text of. We're going to look at the library website. Um, see that search databases bar in the middle of the page that's circled in black? That is our swoop search. There's a couple other ways you can get to it through the library's website, but the easiest way is just right there on that main page. Now, Swoop is our kind of Google-style search within the library's website. It searches most of our databases, not all of them, but most of them, and it's going to get you a lot of results, but that can be good and bad. So if you enter a simple search keyword like agriculture, you're going to get back over 9 million results, and that's complete information overload. It's way too much to search through to find what you're actually looking for. So in order to make searches more effective, we have to narrow down our topic and narrow down some other factors, too. Um, if, you're, if you happen to be following along on your browser and you aren't on campus, then you might have seen this page when, if you tried to run a search or something. Um, this is where you log in with your university credentials to prove that you're allowed to have access to that information that's behind the, the paywall. Um, this login is going to be the same as your Eagle ID, same as Blackboard. If you're having any trouble logging in, you'll need to contact the IT service desk because this is not library specific. Um, it, it takes the same login, so if there's something wrong with the login, then you'll, you won't be able to get in without um, getting it fixed. Okay, now in constructing searches, um, one way to get fewer and better search results is to add keywords to your search by using Boolean operators. That's or, and, and not. So using or in a database search means that you're searching for multiple keywords equally. So if you search for dog or canine or hound, the results will contain articles that men mention any of those terms. Um, so any of the results may contain only the word dog, only canine, or only hound. So this would retrieve a lot more results than if you searched just for canine. When you use and, you're going to actually get fewer results than if you use or. So if you search for employee and motivation, your results are only going to have articles that include both of those terms in the same article. So it won't find, if you'd used or, it would find any articles that have either the word employee or motivation, but not both together. So and links those. You can also use not to uninclude a keyword in your search. This is pretty handy. It works the same way that a minus sign works in Google. So if you're searching in Google for cookie recipes and you keep getting back like tons of Pinterest pages that you don't want to dig through to find what the preview is showing you, you can actually change your search to cookie recipe minus sign no space Pinterest with um, just the, um, the minus sign right up against Pinterest, so no space. And um, then Google will actually eliminate the Pinterest pages from the results, so you won't have to dig through them. It's the same way in the library databases with the word not. It's the same concept. So if you wanted to search for computer virus, but you didn't want to include worms, just search for computer virus, not worm, and you'll have to 
then you won't have to uh, wade through all those articles that you don't really need. Truncation is also a great shortcut. With truncation, you can put in a symbol that's usually an asterisk. In, in most of the library databases, it's an asterisk. And the search will include all the variants of a word. So for example, teach will retrieve results for teach, teaches, teacher, teachers, teaching, etc. You don't have to come up with every version of a key term, just that root portion of the word. So when you're trying to break down a topic to search for it, um, you kind of want to separate it out into the keywords. So for example, if you're doing a project on how stress affects the academic performance of students in higher education, you could break that down into keywords like stress, academic performance, students, higher education. Because academic performance is multiple words, you can put it in parentheses and that'll help kind of keep the phrase intact inside the search string. Um, also, truncating student allows us to get results for student and students. And by adding the truncated terms um, that would get you university or universities and college or colleges, um, that adds different terms that are commonly used for higher education. Um, and because any of those are, would be acceptable in the search, you can separate them out with an or to kind of get a combination going. Um, and if you look, it, it, it looks kind of like a math equation right here um, with the parentheses and the and, and that's because it, it basically is, it's, it's a logic equation. Um, so you're just filling in the words instead of, you know, numbers or concepts. Okay. Um, so if you do want to find an exact phrase you can put it in quotation marks and it'll keep it together, kind of like it, the same way in Google. Um, however, that's not always going to be the best way to search in a database unless you already know maybe the exact title of an article that you're trying to find. You just want to see if we have it. Um, you can put like a portion of that title of the article into parentheses and throw it out there and see if, if you get uh, an easy hit. So a Boolean search, that's when you use and, or, or not, is going to be the best way to find what you're looking for in Swoop and most of the library databases. Now we're gonna look at kind of an example search in Swoop to find even more strategies to, to get what you're looking for. Now, if you're looking for an academic article about how stress affects the academic performance of students in higher education, and you search using Boolean operators, you might still end up with way, way too many results to look through. So this search result list is starting with over 900,000 results. That's complete information overload again, that's just way too much. And you might be tempted to just kind of give up after you see that number, but you're not done yet and I'll show you how to narrow it down. On this search page, do note that the icons next to each result tell you what type of resource it is. For example, the circled one there is academic journal. Um, they might be academic journal, book, periodical, and then the links below indicate how to get the resource. For example, um, that first article has the PDF full text link and that'll take you directly to the PDF. Now there's lots of options on the left side of the screen there that are gonna be your best friends. Those are limiters. They limit uh, the search and there are different options that you can turn on or off that are going to um, limit your results. So you can think of this the same way as like filters in an online store. If you're shopping for shoes, you can put a check mark next to your size and then the website will only show you the shoes that come in your size. It's the same concept as that. So by checking off full text on the limiters, we can be sure that the results will show us only articles that we have access to and not abstracts or partial text records. Um, there's also a handy checkbox for scholarly peer reviewed. This is gonna be pretty important. Um, you don't have to research each article, each journal, each publisher and find out if it's peer reviewed or not. It's, it's such an important thing that it's included right here on the side, you can just check it off. Um, there is another way to check if you come at it from a different angle and you don't have this option. I will show you that a little bit later. So by checking those two off, it takes the results down from 947,000 sum to 717,000. Still way too much, but we're not done. Now, if we scroll down on that sidebar, we've got more limiters that we can use. We're going to check off academic journals, and that cuts out things like book reviews, books and eBooks, and other resources that aren't academic journal articles. You can take further limits um, by 
checking off um, English to just get English language articles. Um, if you speak other languages, then by all means keep them in. Um, right now I only speak English, so I'm going to stick with that. And then you can also choose a geographical focus if that's appropriate for your project. So in this example, I'm going to check off United States. So if you want to use recently published research only, you can also narrow down your search results by publication year. So uh, in this example, I narrowed it down from 2015 to 2018, and now we've got less than 1,500 results, down from 900,000. And we're going to focus it one more step. We are diving into the subject filters. Now, the subject filters are different from keywords. They're more highly structured. They're, they, they kind of integrate the language of the database itself. Now, by using the subject universities and colleges, we now only have 42 results to look through, down from 947,495. And we did that just with checkboxes. So how easy is that? That's, that's totally doable. 900,000 doesn't have to be that scary when you know you can get it down to 42. Now, once you find an article that you like, that fits your topic, that, that is perfect, you can click on the title of the article in the search results, and it's going to take you to a page that's kind of a summary about that article. It's not the actual article. Sometimes, sometimes below, if, if it's available in HTML format, it will put the whole article, but generally not. It's just going to be a summary page. Um, it's going to have maybe an abstract. Um, it's going to have some subject terms. It's going to have a basic bibliography. It's going to have um, the all important citation button over on the side. Uh, it's circled on, let's see. I'm on the wrong slide. Where am I? <laughs> there we go. That citation button that's circled on the side. Okay. Um, and that will give you citations for that article in a variety of different formats MLA, APA Chicago, et cetera. Um, they're automatically generated. So it's good to kind of check them over and make sure that your punctuation is still right and you might have to like uncapitalize things. So it's good to know how to cite things without it, but it gives you the basics and you can kind of go from there. Um, there's also a link to the PDF full text on the side and a link to save the PDF to the cloud. That'll pop up a little box that gives you the option to save it to like your OneDrive or your, your Google Drive. Okay. Now, if you want to find more articles that are similar to that, that one perfect article you found, you can click on that Find Similar Results button, and Swoop will take all the information about that article and build you a new search based on just that article. Now, once it does that search, it's going to erase all your limiters that you had. So you'll have to go through the same steps on the side and you know, check off full text, change the years, all of that, and narrow down your results again. So for saving your articles, there's a few different ways you can save them from Swoop. You can just pull up PDF and save that. You can save PDF to cloud. Um, you can also use the EBSCO folder system. And it's over there on the side, right under Google Drive, where it says add to folder. Now Swoop is a product that is run on an EBSCO platform. That's E-B-S-C-O. And they're a big company, and they do a lot of work in the educational field. Um, and they sell a lot of databases. And this is a product that we bought from them that allows us to integrate all of our databases into this one search. So they run on their own system. They have their own folder system. So in order to use that folder, you have to actually make an EBSCO account. Um, otherwise, when you leave the browser session, that folder is just temporary and, and everything you put in there will disappear. So the link at the top of the page that says sign in on that red bar That'll direct you to create the EBSCO account, and then when you come back next time, anything you've put in your folder in that search, you'll just have to sign in again, and it'll, it'll still be there. But if you go around adding to folder, adding to folder, adding to folder, and you're not signed in, it's, it's a temporary folder, and it won't last unless you make that login. Um, I do want to add a detail in here. If you are searching for an article and forget to check off full text, you're going to find results that have that request this item through interlibrary loan button. Now, in this particular example, clicking on the view record from Science Direct text right next to the circle, um, that will actually take you to the article. So just because it doesn't have a PDF right there doesn't mean it's not there. That view record from Science Direct will actually take you to the article. The PlumX metrics you can completely ignore. Um, it's 
not really helpful that they're on there and I'm not sure why we've got them on there. There's probably a reason, but it does nothing for you. Um, so just ignore the Plumex stuff, but that view record from Science Direct will take you to the article. However, if that option is not there, um, or you're having issues, it's maybe a link's broken, it's just not working, click that request this item through interlibrary loan button and it'll take you to a little form and you just have to put in your contact information. Um, your library card number is your student ID number and then you can add comments to the comment section if you need to let us know anything. Um, it takes about one to three business days and the reference librarian will find the article and get you a copy. And uh, if it is one of the instances that we can't get a copy of it somehow, the reference librarian will let you know. They won't just leave you hanging. So swoop searching in review. Articles are stored in databases. The library has many databases, uh, but a quick way to search a lot of them all at once is swoop. You start with a broad subject. You can use Boolean operators and or or not to refine your search. Use the limiters to focus your results, and then if you find the perfect article, you can use the find more like this feature. And then lastly, you want to make sure to save your article in some way. Um, it's hard to track down an article that you looked at briefly, didn't remember the title or the author, just what it was about. Um, it's possible, but it's, it's annoying to have to track it back down again. So even if you just save the title of it or save a citation, it's, it's worth it. And real quick before we move on, does anybody have any questions? Okay, looks like not. So we're going to move on. The swoop tool is very helpful, but if you're still getting too much junk in your search results, you can narrow down your search even further, but you do have to go back a few steps. So if you choose a specific database that's already targeted to your discipline or topic, you're going to get more specific information and a little bit faster. So on the left side of the library's webpage, there's a list of sections. It starts with about, and then library services, and then locate. Now, if you click on locate library resources, it's going to take you to a list of different types of resources that the library has. And the very first one on the top there is database. So when you click on that, it takes you to the A to Z database list, and those are all of our databases. We've got over 250. Most of those are covered in a swoop search. However, if you're looking for a specific type of resource, you might want to check in here. Um, this list is sortable by subject and type of resource, like video, newspaper, etc. You can also search the list of databases. So if you're looking for an article that is a literary criticism, for example, you can search the databases up in that go box up in the, the corner um, for literary criticism. And the databases that come up are going to have descriptions beneath them that include the words literary criticism. So you can choose which database you want to check for the project. Now, if a database is described using the words abstracts or index, it's probably not full text. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing where to look. So if you click that first option that we found, Literature Criticism Online, it's going to take you to a database so you can use your search. Now, the swoop search that we looked at earlier uses an EBSCO platform, but this is a, an entirely different company that we're looking at now called Gale. Now, Gale databases usually look about like this. They're going to have a, a simple search bar at the top, and then they're going to have a more advanced search below that you can use um, Boolean operators with that you can link up um, with and, or, or not. And they're, they're in that drop down box next to each of those big blanks. Um, we have several Gale databases. So even if it's, even if it looks exactly like this, um, it could be a completely different topic. So just keep in mind that just because you're on a Gale database, it's not going to search all Gale databases. They're, they are separated out into their own little kind of silos. So let's do kind of a test search in this one. If you enter the search terms Walt Whitman in one line and poem in the next line, and then um, the page automatically will construct this search for you as Walt Whitman and poem. Because that search is so broad, you're going to end up with a lot of results. So this search found 1,600 results. Not nearly as bad as 900,000, but it's still quite a bit. 
the good news is there are limiters in almost every single database results page. Now they're going to look a little different depending on the database um, and they're going to have different categories, but that's usually a good thing actually because the categories are different because they're customized for that exact database and the type of content that that database has. So by clicking off the limiters to narrow down my results and going through that, that list there of, of subject, person, name of work, etc., I was able to get 1,600 records down to only 26. So that's going to be way easier to look through. Now, do note that this database does not have a peer-reviewed limiter. Now, literature criticism is inherently opinion-based, and many articles and journals of this type are not necessarily going to be peer-reviewed. So just keep that in mind and make sure to follow your professor's instructions depending on the assignment. So just like with Swoop, which again runs on EBSCO, on Gale, you can save your favorite articles to a folder. It's not the same folder as the EBSCO folder though, of course, because this is a Gale database. Can't make it easy. Um, there are separate companies, so the systems don't really talk to each other. Um, you also, of course, have the option of clicking into the article, downloading the PDF directly. Um, once you click onto the article summary page, you can also get a citation. It, it's going to look a little different than the, the EBSCO setup, but it's still there. It's that citation tools right under the word tools. Um, and you can also send the file to your Google Drive or OneDrive or print it out. So it's got all the same functions. They're just going to be laid out differently. So as long as you know it's supposed to be there, if you look for it, you'll usually find it. <laughs> All right, just like with EBSCO, you, if you don't sign into an account, it's not going to save that folder. But the good news is with Gale, um, for example, and with several of our other ones, it kind of bridges with Google or Microsoft and it allows you to use either a Google or Microsoft account that you've already got set up. Um, so you just have to sign in with one of those and then you won't necessarily have to make whole new password and log in for it. Uh, you can just use stuff you've already got. So in review, you can get to the database list by clicking locate, then database on the library's website. Then you need to choose a database by sorting or searching the list to find the right resource. And then using your chosen database's search tools, you would create a search and then use limiters to focus your results. And then don't forget to save your article one way or another. It's very much the same process with Swoop, but there are specific upsides to using a specific database, um, especially if that's a database that perhaps your professor has recommended you to use. Now, we're going to dip into Ulrich's web here. There's another way to find out if a journal is peer-reviewed, if you're not sure, um, and it's called Ulrich's web. It's one of our databases that's on that A to Z databases list that we looked at with 250 or 280 databases that we've got. Um, but it doesn't have articles in it or videos or images or ebooks. It's got information about journals. So once you open this database, it's going to have a search bar and you can type the name of the journal that your article is from and you can search. Um, so make sure you're typing the name of the actual journal and not the article's title. So if we search for the source of the Gale Literature Criticism Online article about Walt Whitman, which was called Poetry Criticism, we can check to make sure it's not peer reviewed. Many other journals are going to pop up under our search results, but the very top one there is our is the one we were actually looking for. And you can tell because the publisher is listed as Gale and the title is exactly what we were searching for. So the second column on that results page is the one you need to pay attention to. Well, I guess it's the third column if you count check boxes there. But the black icon that's next to the journal titles um, that shows if it's refereed or not. And refereed is going to be another term for peer reviewed. So as you can see on there, that icon is not next to poetry criticism. So poetry criticism is not peer reviewed. Now, if we do another search for the journal, the journal, journal that our article about stress and college students came from in the swoop search earlier, then we can confirm that it actually is peer reviewed. Um, the reason there are multiple instances of that same journal title there um, is just because it's published in different formats. So it'll give you the print, it'll give you the online, it'll give you the microform, but all of them are marked as refereed, so we don't really need to dig in further than that. So Ulrich's Web in review. You can find Ulrich's Web in the A to Z database list. 
search for your journal, the journal title, not the article title, but the journal that the article is actually in. Look for that refereed mark, the black one with the stripes. And if it's marked, you do have a peer reviewed article. If it's not marked, you do not. And before I move on to this next section, uh, I will stop for a second again and see if anybody has any questions. Alrighty, I think we're looking good. So getting help. Um, even with all the tools and strategies that I went over, you still might get stuck and that's okay. That's what we're here for. Um, the buttons help library guides and schedule an appointment are on every page of the library's website. Um, not on all the database pages and stuff, of course, but on the library's website. So the help button um, takes you to several different ways to get assistance, including chat features, contact information. Um, you can chat with a librarian at the John F. Moss Library during opening hours, or if no one is available or um, everyone uh, is logged off of it, then you can actually chat with a librarian from another library. Um, and in, in another, it could even be in Australia. Um, and they're just, they're logged on waiting to help you out with stuff. So we've got an agreement with, um, with a company that does a, a, an academic librarian chat. So you can go on at 2 a.m. and talk to a professional librarian and they will help you figure out your project. So if you get stuck, give it a shot. Um, it's really, really helpful and um, they can help you with research. They're not going to necessarily be able to tell you like the title of the painting that's the third one from the door here in the library because they're not at this library. But if it's about our, our website, if it's about databases, they'll be able to help you out. So the library guides page, uh, or libguides for short, um, are created by the library to help you find resources for a specific class or subject. There are 77 guides currently, and we're always working on adding more. On the LibGuides page, you can search for a particular topic, um, and then each guide has information on how to find books, ebooks, which databases to use, um, and like specific journals that are about that topic. It's a really good place to start out a project. Additionally, within the LibGuides, there's one for media devices. And this one's really fun because it's sort of a visual catalog of the media items that you can check out from the library. And that includes Kindles that come loaded with our book club books, digital cameras, camcorders, voice recorders, and a bunch more stuff. At the schedule and appointment page, you can make an appointment to talk with the librarian about your project. Um, you can pick the day and time from each librarian's calendar and then let them know what you'd like their help with. And if you want, this can even be scheduled as a phone call or as a Zoom meeting like this. Um, all you have to do is type it in the notes and let us know and we can um, catch up with you after you schedule that and get it coordinated. Now, in order to get training on other library resources, you can make an appointment with a librarian or you can check for upcoming training classes that are already scheduled. For example, there's a training session just like this one that's already scheduled on APA Style Central, and that's on the 27th at 2 p.m., and then there's another one later in March. Um, this database can not only help you with formatting citations in APA format, but it also has a tool in it that walks you through each step of creating a properly formatted APA research essay. So this training is online, just like this one, and you can register for it the same exact way you register for this class. And that ends the presentation. If anybody has any questions, I can um, go through the website live if you'd like, or I can um, answer specific questions now. <laughs>